Hi, my name is Lavinia and this is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy, a channel for those who want to learn and get better at board games quickly and easily. Today, thanks to my friend Robert, I'm going to teach you and give you some tips on how to play Wingspan. Peter's favorite game, <laughs> no, I'm joking. What I enjoy the most about Wingspan is that it's got great depth and strategy, yet it's very easy to learn. And the game itself is absolutely gorgeous, as you'll see when I show you the components. If you're new to the channel, subscribe now. In Wingspan, you play a bird enthusiast. You seek to attract birds, feed them, and help them prosper so you can build the most impressive wildlife preserve and win the game. To do that, you will develop a really smart engine building by attracting a variety of birds, feeding them the right food, and placing them in their favorite habitats. After four rounds, the points are counted for the birds, the eggs, the food, and bonus points you've collected. The player with the most points wins the game. Now, let's have a look at the components of the game. Each player receives a player mat. This is where you will build your preserve of birds. It shows three habitats, forest to gather food, grassland for eggs, and wetland to attract more birds. There's also five types of food tokens. Each bird requires specific food. The five types are worms, wheat, berries, rodents, and fish. Birds may require between one to three tokens. The bigger the bird, the more food they need. Then we have the bird cards. There are 170 birds in Wingspan. Each bird card is all you need to know about them. On the top here is the name of the bird, and in the gray box here are the requirements to place the bird, its habitat, and the food required. The feather here shows the points the bird will score at the end of the game, and below you have the nest type. This one is a bowl, this one is a cavity, a platform, a ground nest, and this one here is a special star nest, which is a joker and can be counted as any type. Most birds can also hold a number of eggs shown on the card, like here. But some, like the cowbirds, don't have any nests or eggs. Here you can also see the wingspan. Some are quite small birds and some are really, really big, like the condor here. At the bottom of the card, you have a map and some information about the bird. They don't have a direct role in the game, but they just add a lot of flavor. Finally, some birds also have a special power. These are very important. There are three types of powers. You have the brown, the pink, and the white. The brown powers can be used every time you activate the habitat. The pink powers depend on actions of other players, and the white powers are only active once when the bird is put in play. These powers are very important and are the basis of the engine building mechanism of Wingspan. Now, there's also two end of game bonus cards you will receive and you will keep one of them at the beginning of the game. This is the gorgeous bird feeder and this is where we're gonna roll the five dice which all have the different types of food. Now let's set up the game. So each player places their player mat in front of them. You also have a set of eight action cubes which you put on the side and you're going to shuffle the entire bird deck and you're going to put it close by. When you've done that you're going to draw three bird cards face up. There's quite a few components so it's important to keep everything close by. We'll place the eggs here then we'll place the food here and the gorgeous bird feeder and the bonus cards here. Now the last thing is to roll the five dice into the bird feeder. Then we set the end of round objectives. For beginners, you can use the blue side. If you want more competition, you can use the green side. Now you have eight double-sided tokens. You're gonna pick four randomly and you're gonna place them here in each round. Now every player gets five bird cards and five food tokens, one food for each type. Now players need to select the birds they want to keep and discard the ones they don't. But for every bird that you want to keep, you need to discard one food token. For instance, if you keep these three birds here, that means that you need to discard three food tokens. So say we will discard these three and we would keep these. Now, when selecting the birds, pick those that will help get more cards or food early in the game, like this one, for example. Birds that live in the forest, like this one, that don't cost much food and have a nice brown power should be your priority. 
Now, you can also look at the end of round bonuses that are on the board or your objective cards to fine tune your decision of which birds you keep. Now you pick one of the two objectives and you keep one and you discard the other. Now you give the starting token to the first player and you're ready to start the first round. For their first round, players have eight turns, one for each cube. Each player plays one turn at a time by placing one cube on their player mat, proceeding clockwise. Now there are four actions to choose from. You can play a bird, you can gain food, you can lay eggs, and you can draw new cards. Now the top row is where you play a bird. Place your cube on the top row on the column where you want to place the bird. Now in this case, I want to place this bird. I'm going to pay the cost, which is a worm and a berry. And I place the bird on the habitat, which is the forest one here. Now birds you place in the forest usually have cavity and ball nests and often eat worms, wheat and berries. Birds you place in the grassland usually have ground and ball nests and often eat worms and wheat and birds you place in the wetland most commonly have platform and ground nests and often eat fish and worms. Now I've played the bird so I'm going to move the cube all the way here. Now the next time you will play a bird in this habitat you're going to have to pay one egg plus the food cost. Now as you can see the following times it's still one egg but here it's more expensive. The icon here shows that you can always use two food of any type, not necessarily a pair, to replace one food you need. Note that this only works when playing a bird nowhere else during the game. Now playing a bird is one action, you have three other actions. The forest habitat is where we take the gain food action. Now you place your cube on the leftmost exposed action space available, which is this one, because we've played all these bird cards. Now, had we not played these bird cards, we would have placed the cube here. Now, what you need to know is that all the food that comes from the dice here comes from the bird feeder. So here we would have taken one food from the bird feeder. Now, these symbols here, here and here, mean that I have the choice of discarding one of my bird cards from my hand to get one extra food. Now, in this case, I will get two food. I will not discard one of my bird cards, so I'm going to get one worm. I need to get the, the die out of the bird feeder when I take the food. And I'm going to take a wheat. Now, this one is either or. You don't pick both. I'm going to get the wheat. Now, I've got the food sorted. The cube is going to move here. I'm going to activate this card because it has a brown power and in this case I get one worm from the supply, not the bird feeder. Then I move the cube here, it does nothing, I move it here. I'm going to choose not to activate this card because I can do that and I move the cube here. That's the end of my turn. Now let's talk about the bird feeder. The way it works is that if you have say for example here one type of food left and you have to do an action where you have to pick up food you can choose to re-roll the dice so I could essentially do this and the bird feeder has been replenished you should know as well that worms are the most used so when in doubt take them and rodents are the least used in the grassland habitat is where we take the lay eggs action Place your cube on the leftmost exposed action space available again. This is here because we haven't played any birds on this habitat. Now, in this case, you take the number of eggs that says, which is two, and you place them in any card that has the egg symbols on it. Now, remember that you will need birds with available space in their nest before you can get eggs. And if you take more eggs than you have space, you have to discard the excess. Now, the symbol here here and here means that you can discard one food to get an extra egg. Once my action is done, I'm going to move the cube here. Now, it's not common, but if you ever run out of eggs in the supply, then use a substitute. Finally, we have the wetland habitat. That's where we draw new cards. Like for the other habitats, you place the cube on the leftmost exposed action space. In this case, it's this one because we've played this card here. Now, in this case, it says I can draw a card and this symbol here, here, and here means I can discard one egg 
to draw one more card, which I'm going to do actually. So I'm going to take this one and this one. My action is done. I'm going to move the cube here. This one here means I can tuck one of my bird cards from my hand and put it under here. And that means I can draw one more card. This time I'm going to take it face down from the deck. The cube moves here. That's the end of my turn and it's the next player's turn. Now, we only replenish these at the end of the turn. Now let's look at how turns and rounds flow. You always place birds from left to right. So say for example, we're placing this bird on the grassland. You can't just choose to place it here. What you do is you would place the cube here and place the bird here. If the bird has a white power when played, like this one, that's when you play it. In this case, it says lay one egg on each bird with a cavity nest, which is absolutely fantastic for us because we've got one here, well, the one we've just put, this one here, and this one here. So you can see how powerful just one card can be. Now, Playing a bird is the only action that doesn't activate a row. All other actions will activate the brown powers one by one from right to left. Remember, bird powers are always optional. You do not have to use them if you don't want to. Now, let's look at some specific symbols. Now, these are the predator icons. Now, the birds of prey will either tuck small birds under their card. You'll just need to check the wingspan of the bird you're trying to tuck under for that. Or you will have a chance to place fish or rodents on the card in order to get additional points at the end of the game. It's one point for each food that you've cached. Now, this icon here is for tucking birds to build a flock. Sometimes you will need to use a bird card or spend some food and you will gain food, eggs or more birds for doing so. Every tucked bird is one point at the end of the game. So once your cube is back to the leftmost column, it's the turn of the next player. But keep track of their actions because they may trigger your pink powers if you have any in play. These are triggered once between turns. Maybe tell the other players what your pink powers are so everyone can help each other. Once all players have played all their cubes, it's time to score the end of round bonuses. So after you've removed all the cubes from your player mat, you compare how many eggs, how many birds and nests, the players have for that round's objective. Now there are two sides. The blue one here allows everyone to score based on the number of targeted items they have. So say for example, we finish round one and the red player has three eggs in the platform nest and the yellow player has four, so they would score there. Now the green side is more competitive as it ranks the players from best to worst. The one with the most is first Note that you need to have at least one targeted item to score, even if you're last. That's why you've got this column here. Now, in case of ties, you place the cubes next to each other, but you skip the next place. And then you add the points for the spaces and you divide by the number of players who tied and you round it down. You skip the next places accordingly. Because you keep one cube on the scoreboard, you will play one less turn for every new round. So for the second round, you'll only have seven turns. For the third round, you'll have six. And for the fourth round, you'll have five turns. But that's not usually an issue because by that time, you will have placed birds and you'll have quite a few actions anyway. As soon as the fourth round is completed, the game ends and we score the points for a final tally. Now, use the scoring notepad to keep track of the six ways of scoring points. You're gonna add the points from the birds, that's the number that you have next to the feather. Then you're gonna add the points listed on your bonus cards if you've achieved them. So in this case, we needed birds with cavity nests. If you had four to five birds, you'd score four points and six plus birds, seven points. Then we add the points at the end of round goals. We also add one point for every egg on your birds and one point for every food token cached and one point for every card tucked under your birds. You add these up and the player with the highest points wins the game. The player with the most points has the best wildlife preserve and wins the game. In case of a tie, the player with the most food wins the game. So let me give you some of my tips to win at Wingspan. At the beginning of the game, try to focus on food. Play forest birds early on. Otherwise, try to get food from other birds. Some birds can move habitat. 
I can't stress enough how good these birds are. If played properly, it can move you one step further in each habitat for the rest of the game, and it can make some goals easier to achieve. A lot of goals are well integrated, so try to score on several fronts at the same time, like matching end of round goals with personal objectives. Now, if you multiply this with copycat birds, it's amazing. Birds that give resources to all players can be tricky to play because you might not want to use them as often. The same applies for birds with pink powers. Try to get the birds that give you something different than their habitat, like the crows and ravens. For instance, the grassland birds that give you food, or the forest and wetland birds that give you eggs can be really powerful. High scoring birds give a lot of points, eggs too if you have big nests. Finally, bonus cards. Try to draw more and complete them. That's how you play Wingspan. It's a beautiful 1-5 to five play game and it stays exciting until the last point is counted. It's quick too, with games seldom lasting more than an hour and you'll keep coming back for more. If you've enjoyed this video, like and subscribe or leave in the comments a game you'd like us to teach. We'll make more games easy soon. Bye now!